like uh, this much should be good with him. Yeah, I'm John Henry. Yeah, I was also that guy too, right? You know that? 
that. You didn't know that, did you? I don't know what happened to Magic Carp. Do you know what happened to Magic Carp? <laughs> and there's the Magic Carp himself. There's actually a great seafood place that serves that here. In my oh my god. What? It's a fish. <laughs> like, no way, man. You're eating Pokemon? Yes. I call Pikachu the yellow rat, so what do you like that? You know what so that's the question. I don't have I don't have an answer for that. I'm sorry. Alright. Yes. What book do you think would make a good anime and what role would you want to play? What book do you think would make a good anime and what role would you like to play? That's a good question. That's why I like the book. Catch you in the eye, hold me, call Nice. Uh, Orlando by Virginia Woolf, and I would want to be uh, Virginia Woolf's. I would want to be Orlando when he's a man. <laughs> yes. A bison man, George Steinbeck. Yeah. <laughs> See what George Steinbeck. George Steinbeck. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon. 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 Pokemon is really good. Yeah. 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 Pokemon. Oh, <laughs> Pokemon. <laughs> 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 and then he breaks down Pikachu and he's like, flash back to high school, you know, what do you think of Rabbit's? I got your Rabbit's right here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now you see, this is a message worth to grow on from the men of anime, that obviously we were re uh, well read as, as yes. young men growing up, so books are still important, even if you only find them on your Kindle. So <laughs> read. read. Yeah. All right, you have any more questions? More questions. There's a hand. Yes, you have to talk to me. That's such a difficult yeah. question. We love our job so much. Yeah. It's like we love all of it. It's like asking us to pick a favorite child. And unless you my mother did. <laughs> <laughs> what? No contest. <laughs> no contest. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's tough. I mean, people always ask you know, what's the favorite role you played in the same show. Yeah. And it, it, you know, I like the comedy of some characters. I like the, the darkness of others. I mean, that's the fun of being an actor. I don't think you can really say, you know, it's, you know, that's my favorite role ever, you know. I think if I had if I had to choose one, like at gunpoint, <laughs> um, which has happened, which has happened, so I have an answer. Um, even though I, normally I don't like to like pick favorites when I, of characters because they're all I'm a little psychotic and they all kind of they're all still up here, vying for time and space and my mouth. Um, and so if I were to just like pick a favorite right now, I guarantee you in my hotel room three hours from now, I'll be like, the other characters will be like, you're a bastard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think the, the role most recently that I've played that I think changed me the most as a person, which I didn't expect, was, was Okabe from Star Yeah. Space. Yeah, one person. <laughs> I'm sure his face is better than well. Oh, um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, that was, but I got to write the adaptations for that character as well as play him at the same time, which is incredible. So I never got away from him. I was in the booth for hours and hours, and I come home and write for hours and hours. So that that role probably is the most memorable thing I've ever done, and that's that's still a hard one to choose because there's tons of stuff I've done that I love. Uh, ditto, ditto, ditto. But but I would choose um, I guess Mikado in Da Da Da, and the reason, uh, the, re the reason is. Uh, you know, as I was doing the, the show, voicing it, and of course being like one of the main characters, getting to see the show happen and seeing what happens as it happens. So it was such a great show to know. So that's mm. why that was kind of special for me, was just being able to um, have the show unfold as I was acting. So that was kind of cool. Yes. Oh, um, my question's for all three of you. If you guys could, let's say, pick two characters out of any anime you've ever worked on to meet, not you guys, but meet each other. Wait, the voice actor or the actual? TV no, the actual guy? characters. Okay. The actual characters. Who would you guys choose? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Are these characters we we played or just in any anime? Any anime. Any character. <coughs> <laughs> I wanted to find a question that you guys haven't asked yet, so I tried. <laughs> like 15 minutes of I think it would be really nice if James from Team Rocket, who I played obviously, met Fergie's mom from Viva Pinata, who I also played. Because both of those characters really tested my, my spectrum of my um, personality. You know, from being James from Team Rocket and being Fergie's mother. <laughs> I 
think he's read me a poem and that. Well, it was funny once I asked my producer if I, because I was directing the show, if I could play his mother. And he was like, we need to cast a female playing his mother. And I said, no, we don't. It's like Harvey Firestein meets uh, Selma Diamond. What's wrong with that? And, and, and it was like, we can't do that. And of course we could. And we did. And, and what was great was that, you know, Fergie's mom comes over for that first big episode and is taking care of him out of little boo-boo snacky cakes or whatever he says, you know? So yeah, it was great. So yeah, I think those two characters would really be an interesting meeting. Yes. He's such a sweet boy. I don't know. I've had it. I've had. I had someone once ask me at a panel, like, "What would you? What would happen if, like, France and Sebastian?" Oh God! Oh! <laughs> so, wait for it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like oh. say Sebastian. It's like a magical word. It is. Um, it is. Um, but yeah, and then they're like, "Oh, what would happen if France met Sebastian?" And so my mentor was like, "Oh my God, you're so sexy. You want to work for me?" No. <laughs> But that's not my choice. My choice would be a uh, character I played versus two characters that were in a show I was in, but that they didn't play. The two of my favorite characters. I, I would really see what just like what shenanigans would ensue if Isaac Dean from Bach and <laughs> Isaac and Mary, because they have to be a team, teamed up with the with the Itachi twins from Aura. Oh my God! Yeah. 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 Shenanigans yeah. would be great. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe I would pick Mikado, and because you know he has his gang, and uh, he would meet maybe a Maimon from The Exorcist. Ooh! Yeah. Good answer, good answer. Yeah, a Maimon oh. might like, kind of come out of Gehenna and, you know, say something like, uh, you know, so, you have a dollar, because you're part of the dollars. May I have one? You're not getting it back. <laughs> and Makata would say, oh, well, gee, I, uh, um, maybe I'll get my soulie to help me kick your ass or something. <laughs> um, well, uh, oh, I should have said that. Um, I gotta go now. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> question for the back. Oh, boy. Oh, this is a lesson for all of you. <laughs> I'm sorry to bring the room down into the serious domain here, but yes, I will tell. I will try to do the Reader's Digest condensed version of this story. Back in the early days of Pokemon, when we first started working on that show, um, you know, they didn't really know how successful it was going to be, mm. so they gave us some pretty decent contracts, which was very, very good for us. And whenever there were tie-ins to, um, uh, let's say, Burger King was giving away free toys associated with the show, they would come to us and ask us to do our characters in the commercials. And then we would get union residuals, which would also pay for my health insurance, which is how an actor takes care of his family and himself. So this was a nice bonus because, it, as many of you don't, maybe you don't know, but the average rate for a, a, an anime, which you're getting paid per hour, is not very much. It's, it's more the, it's the continuity of the work. It's yeah, not necessarily you know each session, but a commercial can earn you a lot of money, and then the money goes towards pension and health. In the second year, some people decided to get a little greedy, and instead of asking us to actually record those lines for those commercials, they would lift us off the show and place them in the commercials, which, in theory, really is basically robbing me, and it, you don't need to do it. So, I was pretty mad, let's say, one day, and I was uh, working with the director at that time for the show, just the two of us, and I said something, um, uh, I think I said something like, uh, poor kids and Leo Burnett are the devil. Uh, and I said that a as a joke, as James, as Victory Bell ate me. And he took it and turned it backwards and put it in the show. Now, now look, I don't work for that either. I don't work for any of them anymore. But the, the point was that I'm an honorable guy. Like, it, it, that's the kind of thing that was that just was so disgusting to me that they would do that to an actor who really doesn't make, we don't make money, we go from job to job to job, that's what we do. This was like, nah, we're gonna screw you over. So I said it, but I didn't know it was gonna go in the show. Uh -huh. Lesson learned is this, 
People take our things and play them backwards sometimes. Kind of like, you know, Paul is dead, Paul is dead, Paul is dead. That's a Beatles reference for everyone under the age of 30. All right? Uh, you know, it's stuff like that. And, and someone played it backwards and caught it and reported it back to the production company. And the, the director and I had to pay money to get the master recut. So we still had to pay for it. So I got screwed from the insurance and I got screwed for the fee. But I don't regret doing it. I don't regret saying it. You know what I'm saying? There you go. That's your answer to the question because I know everyone is curious about the back masking stuff. That's your answer. Wow. The question is right there. Have you ever been sexually attracted to a Pokemon? Oh my god. <laughs> Your Rakeems was dressed up as a flaming Moltres. He <laughs> was quite attractive. No, but I always thought uh, when Brock said, uh, nice Vulpix, I thought Vulpix was kind of cute, right? With the little oh, little adorable! Ah! <laughs> no. And there's so many of them, too. There's one for everybody, right? Yeah. Well, I never used to be attracted to any until I found out he voiced the majority of them. That's right. Now really? Thank you. That's sweet. They're so sweet. I'm just going to catch them all. Why are them all? And we got to be careful you don't collect something else. Anyway, let's go. Wow. Charizard gets around. That's all I'm saying. All right? Uh, all right. Next, next question. What? Stay with me in the back. I would just tell mine. Oh, no. They're always getting beaten up. A lot of mine get beaten up. I would just have one. Uh, you got one? I don't know. I don't know. I don't feel qualified to give any of my characters advice. I'm like, apparently you're doing something right, so just keep doing it. Because <laughs> um, they're all like, you're a demon. What kind of advice could you give to a demon or so, like a millionaire kid who like owns half the world or whatever? It's like, you know, or a country. You're like, you know what, kid? I'm just gonna shut up. The glory. I tell friends just be sure to you know practice safe sex. Yeah. Thank you. See, exactly. it's going that direction. <laughs> um, someday. Well, Brock is on the right path because he is a guy that cooks, and I think that that's something that could be very, you know, attractive to a woman, that maybe she would date him. So um, maybe uh, he needs to stop chasing after the same two characters, Officer Jenny and Nurse Joy, and look, look somewhere else. Technically you know, that might be a good yeah, reason. And I think that Kaiba might want to get stoned so he could just chill out. <laughs> you know, he takes things really seriously. Yeah. How did Phil play? Kaiba's kind of, kind of a great character to play. It's a baby. It's, 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 a, it's a, uh, definitely got a great range of, of depth of all the emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the comedy stuff. But Kaiba definitely pushed me, you know, from the anger to this, the sarcasm stuff. I mean, it's not much of a stretch in terms of what I have in my brain myself. I don't yell as much as he does, but um, uh -huh. it, was, uh, it was cool to play something that dark, you know? And yet, people like him. He's yeah. a killer that people like. It's been the I play my blue eyes white dragon. <laughs> and Joey's a dog. 